Hello, this is Paul Sutherland coming to you from Placerville, California. Today I want to talk about palm blocking. Palm blocking for some people is a bit of a controversial subject because they think that it's the old antiquated way to play steel guitar and that the modern new way is a pick block. Um, I actually believe both techniques are very good. Uh, Paul Franklin's playing pick blocking is beyond excellent. So I, there's no way to rationally criticize pick blocking, but on the other hand, there's people like Buddy Emmons, who's a palm blocker, and um, David Hartley's wonderful videos, palm blocking, uh, the recent video by Gary Carpenter that's caused so much excitement. That's all palm blocking. Palm blocking is a very good technique. So let's not debate the issue. If you want to learn to palm block, that's what I want to talk about today. Having said that, if you um, have the opportunity to take private lessons, you should. Uh, I certainly believe in blocking, and I, I believe good steel playing requires that you block, whether that be palm blocking or pick blocking, or ideally to be able to do both, which is what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm having a long ways to go on pick blocking, though. Uh, many, many years ago, I went to Jeff Newman's college. I already had been introduced to palm blocking, but, and when I was at his school back in the 70s, he emphasized that point. And then at the end of the week, Buddy Emmons played, and Buddy Emmons played exactly the way Jeff Newman said. And um, so I became convinced that palm blocking really was valuable. Okay, and let's moving on to the um, disclaimers aside. Uh, palm blocking to me is really a misnomer because you're not really blocking the strings. By blocking we mean stopping the ringing of the strings. You're not doing it with the palm of your hand. You're doing it with the heel of your hand. And you have to get the heel of your hand down. Oftentimes I'll see steel players that are playing with their hand kind of like this. They've got their wrist down. Oftentimes the, the this corner of the hand, I guess that's the heel, is resting on the lower strings, but the top strings, there's nothing to stop the strings from ringing. And they're either pick blocking up there, oftentimes pick blockers will have this kind of a position, or they're not blocking at all. Well, you can't effectively palm block. If, you, if your hand is in this kind of a position with your wrist flat, and look at this bony prominence on your, it's actually your forearm bone. Uh, but I, I call that part of the wrist. If that is up, you're not palm blocking. You can't, because you can't stop the strings. You have to get this heel of your hand down. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to twist the wrist. You got to bring this bony prominence down and bring the opposite side of the wrist up. Just enough. Just enough. Not so. Not to the point that you're uncomfortable. That you're going to cause some sort of wrist problem down the road. You get that bony prominence down. Now, when you do that, a couple things happen. Number one, you, now the, the heel of your hand lays down and I can palm block all the way up to the first string on the E9 neck. No problem. If your elbow is in, like Jeff Newman advocates, advocates you're gonna see an angle. If you follow your forearm, to this bony prominence, then this, the angle is going to go in. Look at uh, the videos of David Hartley. Uh, there's a, two videos I saw this morning, Crazy Arms and Sweet Memories. They're both views with the camera facing straight down. You can really see his wrist angle. He apparently plays with his elbow fairly well tucked in, and he has the, this kind of an angle, so that if this forearm is a straight line here, and then the wrist, the wrist isn't like that. The wrist is not to the right side as you're looking down as you're from your position. The wrist is, no part of the wrist is to the right side of that imaginary line. It's all to the left. Well, that's the way David Hartley plays. And I thought that that was some dogma that I could pass on. But then I looked at the Gary Carpenter video just this morning and his wonderful uh, version of Lighthouse Tale and he doesn't have that angle. And I thought, wait a minute, what's going on? Am I wrong? But then I looked more carefully. Gary Carpenter doesn't keep his elbow tucked into his body the way Jeff Newman advocates. 
his elbows out a ways. And so he does have this imaginary line of the forearm. The heel of the hand is to the right. So that you would say, well, that blows me out of the water. Well, not really. Look at this bony prominence on Gary Carpenter. It's down. So he's playing kind of like this. He kind of has his arm sticking out, and I'm probably exaggerating it, and I, and I certainly don't mean any disrespect to Gary Carpenter. He's doing what's important. He's getting this bony prominence down so that he can lay the heel of his hand on the strings and effectively palm block. So that's really important. Just play and look at how you're playing. If you're playing with this bony prominence up, you're not, you're, you can't palm block. You have to twist your wrist enough. And what, what this angle is going to be depends on where your elbow is. Um, I don't really know how important it is to keep your elbow in. It's a common thing that's said. Um, Gary Carpenter proves to me that you don't really have to have your elbow in. But um, I do try to bring my elbow in. Uh, you, you'll, you'll find your comfortable position. Once you do that, once you get this hand position, um, your, a couple of things should happen. Number one, you, your, your first knuckle of your index finger should be the highest point of your hand and you should have a nice rounded shape. And I believe Jeff Newman used to talk about, imagine there was a golf ball in the, in the palm of your hand. A nice rounded shape. You'll see this kind of a hand position on most top players. Not all of them, but most of them. And including some pick blockers. Paul, uh, Paul Franklin's right hand looks very much like this rounded shape, but he's not palm blocking, he's pick blocking. <coughs> Once you get your hand position, you may have to adjust your finger picks. And I don't know if you can see my finger picks, how angled they are. They're, they're twisted slightly, and it's just a whole lot of trial and error with some needle nose pliers, just very gently bending them. I want the picks to hit the strings so that um, there's no wearing on the edge of the picks. Uh, you know, I particularly play an awful lot on the, with my, index, or my middle finger and I can actually see a little bit of wearing on this pick. Uh, maybe I should bend this pick a little bit more, but in any event, you, you, want the, you may have to adjust your picks a little bit. Okay. Um, let's move on to some specific drills to help you learn to palm block. Um, obviously the point is you hit a note and then you stop the ringing. But the t the, the ideal thing is you stop the ringing of the first note with the same motion where you hit the second note. So, so as you as you, well, I guess I, I guess I said it. You 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 hit a, hit the note, and then you let that ring until you go to play the next note. And just as you're plucking the second note, your your heel of your hand is stopping the first note. And it's actually kind of elegant when you work it out and get the timing correct. A lot of this is timing that only comes from doing drills. So I would say start with, pick a string, any string. You can have the bar on the neck or not have the bar on the neck. And just do some alternate picking. Now, um, alternate picking, I like to use thumb and middle finger. Uh, that's probably a little more common than thumb and index finger, but thumb and index finger is perfectly legitimate if you want to do it that way. Just pick a string, as I say, and make sure that one note doesn't ring into the next one. And the best way to know, initially start on a string and then go to separate strings. So that you, you should always hear one note and you should never hear two notes. Just, um, okay, well, I guess that, that, that's all I can say about that. Um, one really good thing is to, at this point, once you can kind of do that, the Paul Franklin's bar control exercise, and that's probably the subject of a whole other video, but that's a really good place to work on uh, palm blocking. Now, you can do this bar control exercise, palm blocking and pick blocking, and I do both, but for today, we're just going to talk about palm blocking. Uh, 
uh, that was really slow. Um, and you, you know, I'm not showing you my left hand. But that's just basically playing open strings, strings eight and seven. And then with the bar at the second fret, then the bar at the fourth fret, bar at the sixth fret, bar at the eighth fret, bar at the tenth fret, bar at the twelfth fret. Uh, I'm going to do it a little faster here. And then you do every third fret. So open, third, sixth, ninth, twelfth, ninth, sixth, third. I can't play and talk. Then every fourth fret. And then every fifth fret. I missed it. Whoops. I do that with a metronome every single day. Then reverse it. So instead of going eighth string and seventh string, it goes seventh string and then eighth string. Okay, now part of the, what you should be hearing, you hear a little bit of the scratchiness. That that's unavoidable. It's like guitarists. You 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 some you hear their fingers moving on the strings, but um, you don't want to hear the sliding of the bar. Now, but one thing is really clear though: when you do this kind of playing, you're not picking up the bar. You're stopping the ringing of the strings with your heel of your right hand, not with the bar by picking the bar up. So the bar always is in contact with the strings. So the point is that you have to be effectively blocking. And this is where you, you work with a metronome and you, as you can, you increase the speed. But the point is that you go from one fret to the next fret, whichever, whether that's two, three, four, or five frets, with minimum, if no, ideally no bar sliding sound. And you can only do that by effectively blocking. And it's a timing issue that only comes from lots and lots of practice. Once you can uh, do that, you can also you can all you should also work on palm blocking. And here I want to kind of ask you to think back about the B and C pedal scale thing that we talked about in my very first video. That's all palm blocking. And again, the bar never left the strings. But you didn't hear the sliding, and that's because of a, there was an effective palm block in between each position that I played. Now that was all done with the two fingers. On strings three and four, I was, in, I was using the key of G and using the B and C pedals, so... Whoops. Whoops. getting kind of staccato sounding. You don't really want staccato. Well, sometimes you do, but... Now I brought in... Now I'm using three fingers. Try real hard to make those uh, transitions from one position to the next as crisply and, and quickly as you can. So it's not... It's not sliding. That's, that's another subject. We're trying to get the palm blocking nice and precise. Okay, once you can kind of make some headway on that, then you can start uh, working on some of these cliche country licks. 
there in the key of G. I'm working out of the 10th fret, obviously bringing in the A and B pedals. Now I'm, now I'm going to start to cross over. So it was thumb on the 8th, in middle finger on the 7th, and then the 6th string is with the thumb. And after I hit that 6th, I bring in the B pedal, and then I hit the 7th string with the index finger. Um, you know, all those old licks that you've probably already know, the standard country licks, slow them down if, as, as to, as, as, however much you need to slow them down and play them with palm blocking. Another thing I should say is uh, you should try not to use any wasted motion. So no more, don't raise your hand up any more than necessary for the block. No more, no more than necessary to block. And the faster you go, the more important it is to keep that hand really, the hand motion, it's not a big up and down motion. It's I am just not warmed up today, sorry. Uh, one of those, that pattern that I used to, um, that I showed you on concerning the ninth string. Okay. I'm going to stop there. That's ridiculous. I can't play today. Um, we started to talk about crossover picking, and crossover picking is where you where you cross your thumb above your middle finger. And I don't really, I don't think this hap I don't think you do this in uh, pick blocking. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't do it in pick blocking. It is something that's pretty unique to um, palm blocking. Probably the best way to learn this is put the bar down, no bar at all, and just start, just kind of get this alternate thing going, eighth string and seventh string, thumb and thumb and middle finger. Now add the sixth string. Just get so you can do that. Now go up another string. Now go up another string. Obviously, I'm, my accuracy is not all that great, and if I and it, sometimes I even go, I went there from the eighth string up to the fourth string. Sometimes I go all the way up to the third string, and my accuracy really starts to fall down. But um, it's a, it's a drill, and it's a great drill. This can lead to, uh, boy, I, I don't know if I can do this because I'm. There's a. I, I, this is a this is a variation on that. I'm I'm st instead of starting on the eighth string with the no pedals position, I'm starting on the sixth string with the pedals down. So on the key of G, I would be at the tenth fret. Sixth, fifth, fourth. And then one, and then bringing in the the third string. It, sometimes I hit it with the thumb. Sometimes I hit it with the middle finger. But that's all alternate. The the point is alternate picking. Um, as 
I say, I'm not really warmed up right now, but you can get pretty kind of dramatic and flashy with that, and but you have to be able to pick it really fast, and it's got to be alternate. You just can't, you can't play that fast enough if you don't do alternate picking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm missing. Oh, some days are better than others. Anyway, hopefully this will get you started on palm blocking. Um, again, I emphasize if you have access to a good steel instructor, by all means, uh, get private lessons. Um, Skype is an option. Uh, some people that's simply not affordable. Um, it's not affordable for me. So um, good luck. I think palm blocking is well worth the effort. Thank you.